My name is David Clark from Fairman and former lecturer at Fairham College where I taught electronics for 12 years. I was born in Oldham, Lancashire in 1949 and was educated and trained as a lecturer at Wolverhampton Polytechnic where I graduated with a certificate in education awarded by Birmingham University in 1977. I tell you these things not to bring attention to myself, but rather that you might understand who I am and where I'm coming from and endorse the work of those organisations and people whom I've worked with. I have successfully taught hundreds of students in colleges of higher and further education during my 22 years as a lecturer, and many have qualified with a City and Guilds qualification in electronic servicing. I have six children, raised in Aylesbury, Shropshire, Luton and Fareham and Stubbington. Four of my children were taught at Henry Court and three went on to university, trained in the arts, drama and textiles. My eldest son is now teaching English in Vietnam. One daughter is a qualified midwife, whilst the other lives and works in Dubai as a recruitment officer who supports me as a secretary assisting me in my voluntary work here in Fareham. I say these things to show that I am able to speak from experience about the educational and recreational needs of young people. My former and earlier life had been rather different. My brother Michael and I were both convicted criminals in the 60s and were sent to prison for malicious wounding and carrying a firearm without a licence. We grew up in Aylesbury during the 60s and became criminals. We were mods. On leaving Dover Borsa in 1968, I had a three-year career of undetected crime and my brother had spent two terms in Oxford Detention Centre, Borsa training at Rochester and finally a convict at Maidstone Prison. My life was turned round overnight after a bad experience on LSD when I cried out to God for help and it was then that I realised and had the desire to turn my life round. I learned to read as I was virtually illiterate reading a range of classical literature and the Bible. Within one year of my conversion, I was able to confess to the police to over 24 crimes that I had committed since leaving Dover Borstal in 1968 and was fortunate not to receive a custodial sentence. In 1976, I was received as a member of the Beaton Strict and Particular Baptist Church and later I became the secretary. I went on to higher education. I was called to preach and sent by the church as a minister to preach in 1982 and preached in many churches in England. My brother's life remained unchanged and he continued his flamboyant lifestyle. And in 1995, whilst I was teaching at Fairham College, I got news via the ITN television network of my brother's arrest and imprisonment in the Philippines, where he was sent to prison for 16 years. It was towards the end of the year 1999 that I got news of my brother's own conversion and his own reformation and he too turned from his criminal past and became a Christian. He was baptised as a Christian in an old US Army oil drum in New Bilibid prison by a former inmate. It was then I was moved to publish my first book, Converted on LSD Trip whilst a lecturer at Fairham College, telling our story. At the end of the summer term in 2001, I left Fairham College and went on full-time mission work to bring help and relief to my brother and others in the Philippines. We worked together for a number of years from within New Bilibid Prison with former convicted criminals who too had turned their own lives round from crime and were on their own paths of reformation. Here is Michael sharing his testimony and speaking to men on death row who were awaiting the confirmation of their death sentence. We work from our experience and knowledge of a criminal lifestyle to assist many others on their own paths of reformation. This story is told in our joint book, Trojan Warriors, in which we tell our mission objectives. This work is supported and endorsed by the Under Secretary of Justice at the Department of Justice in the Philippines and the Director of the Bureau of Corrections at New Bilibid Prison, who both wrote forwards to our book. Our first man to be released 
after serving 14 years for killing a policeman, policeman was, was William C. Pollock. We commissioned him and supported him financially, sending him back to his home city in August 2002 to work in the jails of his own city in Baguio and Beguet Provincial Jails. This was to work with prisoners and to assist in their own reformation. William has since built two churches and a theological institute in Baguio City. The work is ongoing. Sadly, my brother died in prison of tuberculosis in 2005, before our vision of bringing help to many was realised, but the work continues in England. I have turned our true story into a play in the form of a punk rock opera called Borstal Boy. This is with a view to be performed in prisons of the UK. We have permission for its first performance to be performed in H&P Aylesbury Prison. This work is supported by His Royal Highness himself, Prince Charles. This is a true story of redemption, as told in my book, Converted on LSD, and its special edition called Borstal Boys, specially written for prison inmates and circulating in 20 of our UK prisons. It is believed that through the performing arts, drama and music, we can educate and effectively assist in the rehabilitation of others and in crime prevention and drug misuse. I speak from experience, as a person having experienced my own redemption, as a father, as a teacher, as a minister, as a missionary and actor. We know the needs of young people and others and how to provide some of them. We have identified and can testify to the benefits that the performing arts, drama and music, as provided by the Titchfield Theatre, are the ideal means to fulfil the needs of creative young people and so prevent and keep them from going off the rails. We cannot afford to deny them this benefit. All our work has been self-funded without having to request money from private or charitable sources. For this reason, it has been proposed we form our own charitable incorporated organisation to further our work and help others. Please be aware of one of those charitable companies that we have received help from. It is with the help and support of the Titchfield Festival Theatre that my endeavours may be realised, where I have performed and worked alongside many other artists. I got a radio call to pick up a Mrs. Arthur N. Shaughnessy. and have been educated as an actor in several plays at the Titchfield Company. Please be aware of the foreword that Dr. Philip Fleming wrote to my book, who's the consultant psychiatrist for Kingsway House in Portsmouth, and he writes this. This is an inspiring story of a life that's been turned from crime to a positive account and may be of help to others who find themselves directionless and involved in crime and drug misuse. And in this connection, please view a documentary video that I produced in 2002 that highlights the need for our kind of work in helping young people stay away and avoid the harmful effects of drugs and crime. Please view the first YouTube video on my playlist, Drugs and Crime, Fairham and Stubbington Village. The first video is Stubbington Village, A Drug Problem. A link is provided to the playlist below.